Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day of Road to TG World 2019. Gyarados ended up winning our quick poll on chat here. So um, we are going to be running Gyarados and seeing if this deck has any potential or if it's just um, potentially good on paper but not really good in reality. So we have Gyarados with 150 HP and attack Distilled Blast. You deal 30 damage and you reveal the top 7 cards of your deck. This attack does 30 more damage times the amount of water energy you find there and then you shuffle those energy cards back into your deck and discard the other card. So you do filter out a lot of the cards that you don't need probably. However, we are going to be using 30 energy cards to make sure that this Tail Blast is hitting for a bajillion damage every turn. Next up, we have Hyper Beam dealing 100 damage and you discard energy from your Rose Active Pokemon, but that is probably not going to be an attack we end up using at all. Now, we have a 4 4 line of Garros and then we have a 4 1 line of uh, Lowland Vulpix. And a little Night Tails, we're using a Lowland Vulpix mostly for its speaking attack to search for. To Pokemon, reveal them and put them into our hand. And we also have this one of Alola Ninetales just so that we can um, find some potential win conditions against weird decks like uh, Zorg, where we could just end up uh, promoting this guy and then attacking and not being worried about um, <clears throat> getting damaged by GXs. This ability cannot be stopped by Alola Mock, which is also pretty nice. And then supporters wise we have four crasher wake which is a support guard i have not used myself before um you discard to one your guards from your hand and if you do you search your deck for up to two cards and put them into your hand so obviously with half our deck being pokemon i mean energy uh crasher wake will always find us those two cards we also have four elms to search for vulpixes and magic arbs so that we can place them down we are using the submerge magic arb so that it's safe on the bench and then we have one of builds analysis where we look at the top 10 cards of our deck and then we reveal up to trainer up to two trainer cards there and put them into our hand and we also have a single judge which um we both shuffle and draw for a card so that way we can put energy back into the deck as well we have two risky stretcher to recover magic cards we have double shrine of punishment to increase our damage output a little bit a single choice plan a single buff padding and a single energy recycling along with 30 energy um for rescue stretchers acr that honestly sounds like a very good idea for rescue stretchers is probably a good way to go um with this perhaps we don't need the shrines actually um i mean we do need counter state nah yeah let's go for stretchers i like that i actually really like that four stretchers to make sure that we always have back to back to back to back to back to back to back gyarados and so <coughs> let's jump into the ladder with gyarados and see what we can do let's see what we can do okay so we flip tails i mean we don't uh win the flip we're up against gaia storm another uh youtube channel i guess so we'll send a friendly hello it's two demo accounts against each other surprisingly and we are going second we do find the crasher wake um going second with this deck is going to be very sad because our magic arp is definitely going to go down um like there's no deck that doesn't that isn't able to attack for this damage on turn two um we seem to be up against a Jirachi here which probably indicates oh no it's Malamar in fact okay it is Malamar so Giratina's ability could be pretty scary honestly it could be pretty darn scary um so we won't we shouldn't bench like unless we have guaranteed ways to evolve um a lot of magic arts at the same time uh we should not be like and hello Adre, sorry I didn't say hello. Um, yeah, this is gonna be a bit complicated, I would say, because of the Giratina potential. Lily for seven, straight up. Very nice. Um, this Crasher Wake. 
is gonna have to be towards Oof. Man, the, I mean, probably an Elms and a Gyarados? No, an Elms and a... Yeah. No, a... I don't know. Probably a Vulpix... And another Crasher Wake, maybe? Yep, there's a Giratina. There's an Energy to the Giratina, and there's a Tail Flip. Okay, so the Magikarp there is pretty nice. Definitely gonna do Crasher Wake here. And so let me think this through. I think I do wanna grab a Vulpix here. Just to Beacon for double Gyarados and then perhaps another Crasher Wake. Right? That sounds solid. Yeah, that seems solid. And then I will go ahead and beacon for a Magikarp or double Gyarados. Ah, the Crasher Wake, I guess. Um, definitely a Gyarados. And then perhaps a Magikarp. Hmm, this is rough. Instead of Vulpix, this might work better with Jirachi. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do these two. This is gonna be a bit sketchy. Um, my opponent will probably get the first prize card. And um, the good thing, the good thing is that Gyarados is not one-shot by Giratina immediately. That's good. Gyarados is not one shot by Giratina immediately, so one Gyarados can potentially take down two Giratinas. Um, eventually, the the recovery damage will end up mattering quite a bit, most likely. Well, as long as he manages to only place one damage counter on them, but we'll see. Um, Bill's analysis will probably end up being the next card I I choose here. Okay, so there's a Stellar Wish. Grabs a Viridian Forest. Which could end up helping us as well. Definitely could end up helping us. I'd be very surprised if my opponent doesn't take our KO this turn. Though that might be exactly what happens, which I don't mind, honestly. I don't mind the Beacon. Oh, is he, does she have a Guzma? Did she only play a supporter? No, she's gonna have the Kuzma, isn't she? Yep. Perfect turn one, perfect turn two. Every single time. <sighs> perfect turn one, perfect turn two, every single time. Has a double Giratina, so to say we're in trouble would be the understatement of the year. Okay, so a Magic Arp is now gone. Definitely gonna promote this Magikarp. And then, so here's the thing. I will evolve here, right? And then if I bench this Magikarp, I think I bench it the next turn. Because how could she deal that extra 10 damage? I don't think there's any way she can, right? <sighs> Peel's analysis completely whiffs here for us. Thank you, Dave. I think I'm just gonna attack here. Wow. Only two energy, so I barely get the knockout. And I get rid of the magic arp and the elms. That was honestly a pretty bad um, distilled blast. I mean, I do thin quite a bit. I can have Vulpix off my prizes, that's not great. There's already two Magic Arps in the discard pile. I purposely didn't bench this Magic Arp because this Gyarados should survive any hit. And then I will bench the Magic Arp. 
But now the issue is, I mean, the Meridian City might help me in using Crasher Wake if I top deck a water, which I would expect me to top deck a water. There's three, four waters. So I still have 26 waters left to go. Assuming four of them are prized, there's still 22 water energy left in my deck. <coughs> we'll see. We shall see. Um, there's the Meridian Forest first and foremost. There's a Stellar Wish. So 150 HP is a very clutch number. 160 would be perfect. 150 is just not quite there. Um, of course, my opponent could just use a GX, right? To KO me here. Which probably, which honestly wouldn't be a terrible idea. Honestly would not be a terrible idea. Hello, Leonardo. There's a Lily off of the Jirachi. Hello, Yuncifer. Lily. I mean, she could also prepare like a Guzma play for next turn, where she hits me for 130 and then goes Guzma, bring out the, um, <coughs> the Giratina and take a knockout that way. That's also something that could just happen here. Probably what's going to happen. So yeah, this deck just seems way too fragile. What deck have I liked the most, Leonardo? Um, I think Pikachu and Sacrum is very, very strong. And Zapdos, like Zapdos decks in general, no matter what you're playing with them, are very, very strong. Um, Jirachi, Zapdos is very strong, and Pikachu and Sacrum. I really like both of those. Um, Yuncifer, do you think Blast Evelyn will still be strong in this format? Yes, I do believe so. <clears throat> I do believe it will still be strong in this format because it has a very easy time getting KOs on the big guys. Yeah. Okay. Slacks, thank you so much for the host. Very kind of you. Uh, thoughts on Passimian? I've never been a really big fan of Passimian, honestly. Um, ooh, the buff padding is actually very nice. I'm gonna trade the Vulpix for a water. I have 22 waters, exactly as I predicted. <laughs> exactly as I predicted. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach the buff padding to the active. And then do I attach the energy to the Magic Arb? No, I'm going to keep it in case I need to crash or wake for something else entirely. So, four energy. Oof. Oh, no, that's enough. Ugh. Four energy is actually the perfect number. Four energy is actually the perfect number. Okay, so crash or wake will probably end up netting me double rescue stretcher. That might what I end up going for. Um... So yeah, the buff padding is going to be nice to prevent the, the Guzma play, which is a big deal. 
Unless she plays a field lord. Guzma plus field lord is worst case scenario. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen. We see metal energy, however. <clears throat> so that indicates <coughs> that she is using Ultra and Crossma, which I did not have information about previously. Yeah, so now the GX attack is something else we have to worry about. Now the GX attack is something else we have to worry about. My Crasher Wake here is probably gonna be for... It's just, I'm running out of steam. There's no way I'm gonna be able to produce six Gyarados. There's no way I'm going to be able to produce six Gyarados here. Absolutely no way. The Judge is gone, all four Elms are gone, the Builds Analysis is gonna have one Crusher Week left. Okay, so Water Energy, can I go ahead and crush her wake here, and so Rescue Stretcher plus Crash her wake? I mean, I think I have to. Daniel, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime subscription. Yeah, it's like every single turn is just a bit away of disaster, indeed. Um, I mean, I guess if my active Gyarados takes two prizes, I'm fine. And I have to set up, right, the Magikarp here. I 100% have to set up the Magikarp here in case he goes for the... Um, for the thing. Okay, so one rescue stretcher gone. Now we filter our deck quite heavily to where <laughs> we are dealing just so much damage. We're gonna water off the prices, so we will be able to crash our wake next turn. And if our Gyarados survives, then that's another Gyarados set up. But we are going to run out of Gyaradoses eventually. <laughs> Cards to improve in Blastephalon for team up. I mean, if you're playing the Ditto, there's the potential to play the Ninetales, uh, which has a really cool ability, the regular Fire Ninetales. Um, other than that, I don't think the deck changes any, if at all. Honestly, I don't think it changes at all. Um, Field Lore is a consideration to combat buff padding, if that becomes a thing. <coughs> And John F, no tool drop or Nido Queen today. No, I did not plan for those decks today. I have Charizard and Lost March waiting after Kiardos. Yeah, and I only I will only have time for one more. Okay, so my opponent will in fact choose to use Ultra Necrozma this turn, which I think might end up letting me win the game. Well, no, because of Dawn Wings. Ah, uh, yeah, Dawn Wings is gonna be a big. Dawn Wings. Dawn Wings is what's going to let my opponent win the game. I mean, if you bench this guy, it has to be to use it, right? Right? Yeah, so Dawnwings' GX attack will be what ends up winning it for her, I would say. There he goes for three. Keeps failing the Mysterious Treasures, though. Yep, okay, so we'll choose to use Ultra and Crossma, try and make me whiff and attack. Which, like I said, I mean, it depends on the Dawn Wings. It all depends on the Dawn Wings here. I do top deck the water. 
So I will crash her wake for a Gyarados and a water, right? And then the last rescue stretcher. Like this is a deck where you wish you would prize your good stuff. That way you can't discard them with this tilt blast. And I'm hoping to hit seven water energy here. I hit six, which is 210 damage, which is enough to get a KO. I will get two prizes and then Either Marshall or Dawnwings will take over here, and that's gonna be it. We're not gonna be able to secure our last prize card. Yep, there's a Mysterious Treasure for the Dawnwings, or for another Ultron Chrisma that also works. Yep, another Ultron Chrisma that also works. That also works, yeah. Because Pika doesn't help us. Pekan doesn't help us really. So close. So, so close. If my build analysis had hit, um, yeah, and that Guzma pretty much says if you don't bench to Magic Arbs, you have lost the game. So close, guys. So, so close. Ah, so, so close. Yep. Um, I mean, maybe if she's out of energy? Nah, she has more skateboards. Yep. Maybe she was out of energy, she couldn't retreat because then no Guzma. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, definitely not the case. She also was running switches and a skateboard, so tough call. Um, tough call for sure. But we almost, almost got there. So let's try another game of Gyarados. It's an interesting deck to play around with. It's an interesting deck. I don't like after seeing that game. I can already tell that it's not going to be great. Right? It's not going to be the most competitive deck, but it will. Um, it's an interesting mechanic, at least. But definitely would not take this even to a league challenge, I would say. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're going second yet again. No Brokrit and Pidgeotto. No, Atrey, will I play Aerodactyl eventually? Probably, I just, I don't see how Aerodactyl is ever going to be good. It's like, it's uh, very hard to get out stage one because you can't nest ball for the basic. You have to draw into the unexpected, um, into the, into the fossil trainers and if you're not up against a GX deck, it's a very mediocre attacker, only dealing 90 damage. So I don't see how you could ever want to... Um, um, how you could ever want to... To play Aerodactyl. Um, hey Cameron, it wasn't terrible. Um, <clears throat> I just, my deck was just a bit too strong for 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 yours but um gg <laughs> gg what about fossil excavation map see that's the thing daniel like we're going out of our way to really get those fossils into play and aerodactyl is a very mediocre attacker i don't see what's good about aerodactyl that's the thing like you want to hit 180 damage for three energy do it with necrozma because you're attacking a gx anyways and you're going to be trading two for two if it's not a GX, then you're only hitting for 90. A stage one that only hits for 90, when you could be using Giratina to attack for 130. So I don't see any reason to play Aerodactyl over the other myriad of attackers that Malamar has. And without energy acceleration, Aerodactyl is definitely not going to be good. So what else would you play Aerodactyl with other than Malamar? And there's already 10 other 
much better attacker than her attack deal, so that's that's my thinking. Yeah. Nico, muchas gracias. Saludos hasta Buenos Aires. Uh, starting with the Elms is very nice. Starting with the Elms is very nice. We have Dole Magic are prized. Oh, okay, so then I was wrong. <laughs> I thought Aerodactyl said you hit 90 more if you had, um, if you were hitting a GX. Okay, then that's my bad. That's definitely my bad. Um, I will go ahead and beacon here for double Gyarados, right? Save those from getting discarded. I have triple Gyarados and I filtered my deck decently ish. Um, okay, so. I take back everything I just said about Aerodactyl. Maybe there is merit to it, and I will eventually um, play it. I will eventually play Aerodactyl. Sorry about the confusion. <laughs> Sorry about the confusion. Nick, thank you so much for the Patreon support. I really appreciate it. Alex, same to you. Thank you so much for the help on Patreon, I really do appreciate it, guys. It makes a world of difference. Um, and Joe Bro, likewise, thank you so much for the support. I guess it's Patreon renewal time right now. Um, sí, protísimo, eventualmente haré Kabuto Star. Thank you so much, Sandy, for the $5 pledge. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, so I'll definitely be trying out Aerodactyl then. Armando, thank you so much for the $10 pledge on Patreon. And so, no reason not to evolve, right? No reason not to triple evolve here. And then just start attacking with Distilled Blast. The White Snake, thank you so much for the Patreon pledge of $1. Very kind of you. And let's go ahead and Distilled Blast. We get four. And we discard the rest that should be enough to get a knockout that's awesome john thank you so much for the pledge as well we get a prize card here which is a water unsurprisingly leoncio zamora thank you so much for the support as well and jirachi comes up there's no threat of us getting attacked this turn which is great right and thank you so much as well to corey Thank you so much, Corey. And thank you so much, Nicole, as well. Very kind of you. We see a nest ball for another Jirachi, not even the Honage. Brian, thank you so much for the $35 pledge as well. Very kind of you. See the escape board, see another Stellar Wish, or maybe the first one, I'm not sure. Ryan McCready, thanks so much for the $10 support on Patreon. And Vicious, thank you so much for the $10 support as well. Josh, 12 months in a row, you're finally at the purple table month. Thank you so much. Very, very kind of you. Yus, thank you so much for the $10 pledge very kind of you Josh thank you so much for the support on the subscription Christopher thanks so much for the dollar pledge on patreon okay so my opponent got double honages this turn which is nice for him we'll go ahead and attach and then I'm just gonna distill blast here uh, we get five energy that's 180 damage but the metal frying pans actually allow the Genesect to survive which is impressed which is impressive um pikai what thank you so much for the 35 support on patreon as well very kind of you um hugo padilla thank you so much for the support on patreon <clears throat> If you're interested in finding out more about Patreon, guys, patreon.com slash tablemon. It's the best, absolute best way to help. Morton Shots, Peterson, thank you so much for the support as well. Patreon is definitely the best way to support the channel. Um, if enough if enough people support it through Patreon, and Nectar, thanks so much for the support. If enough people support it through Patreon, um, I would be able to just do streaming full-time rather than 
have to dedicate so many hours to coaching. Rhea, thank you so much for the support as well. Uh, best budget deck? I think Lost March, yeah. Or maybe Sapdos isn't really a budget deck. Uh, Boss, thank you so much for the 10 pledge as well. Very kind of you. <clears throat> Not sure what my opponent is doing here. He might be AFK now. The Gramble deck isn't viable. It's just very easily tech for. And Anavia Trees, wow, thank you so much. For the Patreon support, very kind of you, thank you so much, that's a very big pledge, thank you so much. Sergio as well, thanks so much for the support. Is today Patreon Day or something? Apparently so, yeah. <laughs> today is indeed Patreon Day, where subscriptions are getting renewed. Uh, too bad all those pledges don't count for the m, &M count, yeah. <laughs> Ish, Jorge, thanks so much for the pledge. And there's a victory. Um, <clears throat> Tool Drop is also another deck that I think is very gimmicky. Josh, thank you so much for the subscription. Tool Drop is another deck that I think is super, super gimmicky. Um, Nico, I actually used Sapdos earlier today. You'll be able to see the full video um, tomorrow on YouTube. Yeah, the list that I ended up using, in case you want to try that out. Um, and Lost March will probably be the deck after this one, so you might want to hang around for that. I would like to go first, thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you once again to all the people who pledge on Patreon, it really makes a world, world of difference. We are going first, we have no Garrison in hand, so we're gonna have to Elms here. We're gonna have to Elms. Uh, the stretcher is nice. And I definitely think, yeah, especially because there's four Gyarados in the deck. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna go ahead and Go ahead and retreat into the Vulpix. Uh, the ditto probably indicates that my opponent is using a Zorg deck, probably a uh, GX deck at the very least. Um, my opponent says I have a good deck, I will send a heart back. We see a Nest Ball into Meowth. So there's a Persian threat which discards your hand. This is probably Zorg. Weavile Persian, maybe? Something along those lines. We're gonna see Lily, we're gonna see Pokemon Communication. So we definitely just like I'm gonna spread the resources here and I'm just gonna beacon for Am I gonna get knocked out next turn? I don't think so. So I'm gonna grab Magic Arb. Well I have double stretcher, so perhaps double Gyarados is slightly better here. What is Magic Arb's ability? It can't be attacked in the on the bench. Um, Dublin expanded with Sigil Leaf that can take for tools. I mean, there's already a basic Trubbish that has the tool drop attack and the Sigil Leaf is available and it's still not um, a used deck, so... Oh gosh, make him pay. Hits me for 20. And then what happens? Your opponent has four more cards in your hand, they reveal their hand. Discard cards you find there until your opponent has exactly four cards in their hand. Oh, they discard. Wow. <laughs> and he got rid of my water energy. Yikes. Big, big yikes right there. Um, definitely evolving. Definitely evolving. And then I will pass, right? Wow, that person is so annoying. <laughs> so, 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 so annoying. <clears throat> There's a Zork.
I'm still out of range of a KO, which is good. Um, Henry, which one benefits you more, Twitch subscription or Patreon? Um, so basically, like every subscription on Twitch is, I get 50% of the value of the subscription and Twitch keeps 50%. On Patreon, I get like 90% and they get 10%. So it's much better for me if you do Patreon. <laughs> Thank you so much, Henry. That's very kind of you. Okay, so Bill's analysis fails again. And then I'll just have to pass. Nothing I can do. The two waters were a really good discard for my opponent. Right there. We are in a lot of trouble here. We are in a lot of trouble. Lily for two, crushing hammer almost crushed my dreams. Crushing hammer in fact almost crushed my dreams. Righteous beating gets a knockout. Okay, so here we go. Here we go, we finally get to attack. We need seven, no, not even seven energy gets us a knockout. There's the energy that I needed earlier on. Um. I should probably stretch her back the Gyarados, right? Yeah, we're definitely gonna run out of steam here. I'll just do still blasts. I lose four important cards. I only hit for 120. Acer all is gonna be a real thing here, especially with those bodybuilding doubles. This is some sort of control deck, especially because of the crushing hammer. So I fully expect my opponent to be playing a heavy count of Acerola plus Max Potion, so... Flips and Nora Tails, that's good. Right, that is definitely good. Yeah, thank you so much Henry for considering doing that. I bet Will Guzma, the Vulpix, which is okay. Like, if I, eventually at some point I will just get energy every single turn. Uh, no Acerola. Trying to resource management, I mean, it's gonna be funny if my opponent resource management back the crushing hammers. <laughs> it's only gonna be really, really funny. He must not be very aware of how this deck looks like. Yep, yeah, he's just gonna put back the crushing hammers. That works. I mean,. I guess at some point he will or might be able to um, <clears throat> pull off something like get rid of my energy and also <clears throat> and also get rid of like get rid of my energy and bring the Vulpix up, which would be a big deal because then I can't retreat and attack at the same time. Um, so then the game would come to a point where I need him to whiff. I need him to whiff Crushing Hammer Head Slips after I attach to a Kyarados. Well, no, I could any energy I top deck, I attach Retreat. No, because then all he needs is Kuzma to keep forcing that, but he also needs to retreat. I don't know, it's gonna be weird. We might win this, but it's not guaranteed, I don't think. Um. Okay, so my opponent was just taking a long time to decide which Pokemon to bring up. Which is okay. There's a DC on Zork. There's an Acerola, as expected, for my opponent to be playing a heavy amount of those. Um, the Dull Stretcher in my hand is nice, right? The Dull Stretcher in my hand is indeed nice. There's trait number one. Or trait number two, I'm actually not sure. It's for a hundred. Okay, the Magikarp top deck is very nice. 
definitely very nice um okay so should i attach an energy in preparation of that or do i keep it in my hand for now uh, what i think i'm gonna do is i'm gonna superior energy recycler just to try and hit maximum numbers even if i hit all seven energy i still don't get a knockout and there's a Gyarados gone, a Crusher Wake, and a Rescue Stretcher. Put a lot of damage on the field. Uh, 150. Yeah. I feel like we're gonna out damage my opponent. Like we're gonna overwhelm him at some point. Right? The water energy is pretty crucial in case he tries to Guzma Stall this turn. <clears throat> I just need to keep my hand at four or less cards. It's insane that Persian chooses what you discard. I thought it was like, your opponent has to discard until they have four. It's honestly crazy. Okay, finally flips our heads, which makes no sense, right? Because you have the knockout on the active, or because, I mean, maybe he's planning to not attack. Maybe he's planning not to attack. <clears throat> Another Zorwam. A Lusamine, so has Lusamine loops, Acerola and Guzma, that's not good to see. I'm gonna be very surprised if my opponent re takes a KO here, because then he just wasted the crushing hammer, <laughs> right? So good thing I didn't play the energy down, because if he had flipped heads, gotten rid of the energy on the bench cards, and then knocked out the active, that would have been terrible. He made a gimmick deck with Persian, Garbodor, and the new Dark Monk, it's okay. Yeah. I can see that. And my opponent will go ahead and sharp plus for the KO, so <laughs> the crushing hammer was definitely a big waste. I do, Henry, I do in fact have Table Mod GX cards left. <laughs> in case you want to sign up for that. I do indeed have Table Mod GX's left. So, 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 I just attach, right? This thing is very simple. Oh my gosh, did I whiff knockout? No, I didn't. Okay, 150. Yeah, what I discard is not a big deal. Get a water. My buddy needs to go mine Crushing Hammer plus a Guzma if he really wants to stall out things. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. I do like them, yeah. I, th I thought they came out really, really well. The Table of Munchie X cards. My opponent is obviously going to Acerola. Persian could be annoying, um, so I might have to prepare for that. <sighs> Acerola is the more annoying card though. Because I can because of the bodybuilding dumbbells, I can never get a one shot. Even if I show seven energies off of this deal blast. You love the deck collapsing gravel? I'm not a fan. I mean it's an interesting concept, I just don't think it's very good. Like, it doesn't have what it needs to really put itself out there because you rely so much on your top deck on not discarding the clutch cards. It's just, it's not great. There's your end guru. How many Acerolas does this play? So 
so many trades, which means he will eventually be forced to use a rank guru. Hits for 120, that's fine. My damage output, oh no, if I show, okay, so if I show seven energy, I will be able to um, get a KO. Oof, so close. One energy, one energy short, stupid elves. <laughs> stupid elves. So, yeah, my opponent is happy with good reason. <laughs> Henry, that would be amazing. Yeah, that would be amazing. Gosh, I don't know why I'm coughing so much. I apologize for that. I really don't know why I'm coughing so much. Second raw Acer Ola. Is he gonna go out onto Oran Guru now? Or is he gonna get a KO? No, he's gonna go out into Persian. Interesting. Ah, the bodybuilding Dumbles is such an annoying card. And without Choice Band, I won't be able to get a knockout. I mean. If I get back the nine tails, this water nine tails, I might be able to do something. Overwhelm my opponent? No, there's no way. There's a head slip. That's fine. Clips tails. There's Acer Olas though. Acer Olas is what's gonna kill me this game, 100%. Acer Ola is what's going to kill me here. Goodbye, another Elves. Oh, if I had hit 7 energy in the previous one, I think then I would have won the game. It's just I can never KO a Zork. And he can hit me, I, can, I don't KO, and then he Acer Ola hits me again and wins. And that's the issue. Although, I mean, he's not going to have infinite, though. So yeah, honestly, it's going to come down to... Uh, the Water Alola Ninetales. It's gonna be up to the Water Alola Ninetales to do something here. Too OP for PTCGO indeed. Wow! Wait, what? Oh, okay. So he doesn't have to use Rank yet. I was like, wait, what? Yeah. That is my last Risky Stretcher, so if I want another Gyarados, I have to put the cards back into the deck. But then, odds are, they will get discarded. So... I'm gonna go ahead and... Get back the nine tails. The issue is I won't be able to attack. Two turns in a row. But, I mean, he's forced to use our Guru this turn, however. Took my Vulpix. <laughs> this is really intense. There can't be many more non-water energy left in my deck. Ugh. That just delays it even more. What does he have to replenish, though? He has seven cards in his hand, so if he's Cynthia's, he still... He still decks himself out. Okay, so he's gonna go out into Oranguru, which makes sense. So then I get a prize card. Eliminating Oranguru is very nice. He should get a Serola, Stretcher. A Serola, Stretcher, and Lusamine, maybe? No, a Serola, Stretcher, and Energy. He's out all DCEs. Would Brock's Grid be good for this, Daniel? I mean, yes, it would be. The thing is, um, yeah, it's all a stretch or DC. The thing is, um, wow, there is still, there are still cards that are not, um, okay. So it's gonna it's gonna be up to a little nine tails to win this for us, <laughs> but infinite crushing hammers will probably do us in. 
Um, he should have promoted the damage to Auric though. Um, would Brock's Creep be good in this? The thing is, like, yes it would be, but you can't draw the cards. That's the thing, you have very little things to draw the cards, because half your deck has to be energy, pretty much. You just... Like, even it... You would have to play four Brux Grit for it to be maybe worth it. And then the turn you put them back and then you attack, then... Uh, like, you might just end up discarding your Magic Orbs anyways. The best thing that can happen for you is if you start double Elms and Rescue Stretcher in your hand. That's the dream, because then after some of them go down, you go Elms, like you go Stretcher, put back the Magic Orbs, and then Elms, you get them back. Yeah. Here in Italy, it's 23. 23 degrees Celsius. Okay, I think my opponent did the wrong thing. He put the DC in the bottom of the deck. <laughs> my opponent put the DC in the bottom of the deck. There's a 7 energy, so that's gonna lose him the match. His next card is Rescue Stretcher. Right? His next card is Rescue Stretcher. His last card is DC. I'm pretty sure my opponent had probably the win. Black Market doesn't matter. He's out of Dark Type Energy. So it's not a big deal. Definitely not a big deal. We see the Stretcher. Gonna have to put three cards back. No, just grab Zero and Guru. So does he have Switch then? Wow. Discards a Kuzma. Finds the DC, attaches it. The last card is Kuzma, okay. We'll work with that. And then we're gonna see a resource management. For the same three cards, probably. He should have put the DC at the top. That was silly and attacked with this guy. And then he would have uh, Acer all let the energy back, gone into Oranguru and keep reshuffling. That's what my opponent needs to do, but he's not doing it. <clears throat> Crushing Hammer, Acer Ola, and Rescue Stretcher. No, doesn't put energy back. And since we do know, wait, <laughs> wow. He didn't put energy back, and he insists with the crushing hammers. So now this is a 100% game, because my opponent has no way to attack anymore. We know the three cards that he has left access to. Um, all he can do is just maybe buy himself a turn um, by using a Zerola on the damage to Arc and getting back the, the thing, but with no energy, the stretcher doesn't matter because he can't resource management anymore. This is a game we should not have won, and we end up winning. This is definitely a game we should not have won, and we ended up winning. And yeah, guys, I just looked at the time. I don't think I will be able to stream anymore after this one. So that will leave us Charizard and Lost March pending for tomorrow's stream. There's the Acerola. <laughs> Okay, so he's gonna choose to Rescue Stretcher back three Pokemon. How, like, he's just delaying the inevitable. He cannot win anymore. He cannot win anymore. He needed to put back an energy, not the Crushing Hammer. <laughs> Definitely not the Crushing Hammer. I will not send an emoji, I will not be that guy. I will, however, power up. I will take a look at my deck. And yep, it is exactly 16 energy. So we're gonna go ahead and distill blast for 240 damage. Uh, Supreme X, lol. I don't know who Dennis is. I am not Dennis. <laughs> I am Tablemon, aka Pablo. And that's gonna be game. That is 100% going to be game. Nothing survives a hit next turn. Uh, my opponent doesn't have Guzma. So there we go, there's the victory. Definitely should not have won that game. I feel like my opponent had all the resources to win. He just didn't realize what his win condition was and he insisted with the crushing hammers, which were not going to win him the game at all. 
Um, so yeah, that 2,220 damage, I, that's probably the highest I've ever dealt. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me today. I will be back tomorrow for more team up action. Sorry, this was a shorter stream, but I do have coaching commitments to get to. Like I said, if you guys support me more on Patreon, I can commit more hours to content creation and therefore longer streams, better videos, etc. Thank you guys so much for watching YouTube. Don't forget to leave a like, it really helps out the channel. And I will see you guys tomorrow for another table month stream. I will happily show the Gyarados list. Thank you for reminding me, Nightblade. Here is the Gyarados list. Um, Brock's Grit might be helpful. The two tools are probably redundant. Um, the Bills is terrible. I would definitely take out the Bills. Um, not sure. Is there any other Pokemon recovery card than Stretcher and Brock's Grit? <clears throat> not quite sure. Uh, the Nine Tails could come in clutch at some point. Um, but yeah, this is what we used today. Probably needs a bit of work. Uh, maybe extra damage modifiers like Shrines could be decent. I don't know. Um, the deck is just, there's very little on your in your control after you start attacking with Gyarados that the deck just crumbles itself. Yeah, so yeah. Thank you guys so much, don't forget to leave a like, and I will see you guys next time, aka tomorrow. Bye bye